my beloved brothers and sisters congratulations to you upon this beautiful day of Eid a day of happiness a day of joy a day of excitement a day where it is prohibited to fast we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from every one of us the fasting and the acts of worship the charities the recitation of the Quran the listening to the Quran the beautiful changes that we have made during the month of Ramadan this is indeed a day that's given to us by the Almighty in order to display the happiness and the pleasure in order to display the goodness in order to be happy in order to reach out to one another in the best possible way to smile to resolve matters and problems to to be a day of reconciliation to be a day of kindness and charity this is a day given to us as Muslims by the Almighty after a great season of worship of Allah within the month of Ramadan the month of Ramadan being the greatest month within the Islamic calendar a month whereby we have abstained from food and drink and permissible sexual relations for the sake of the Almighty from dawn to dusk every day for the entire month we have become more conscious during this month of the way we behave we've become more conscious of our character and conduct we have also reached out to the poor in our charities during this beautiful month and after such a lovely month the Almighty warns us about exiting the month in a way that we become the same old people we were forgetting about the beautiful changes we had made within our lives and our systems for this I remind myself and yourselves let us continue with similar compassion with similar goodness with similar greatness of character and conduct that we had during the month even now that that month is over and for this reason the Almighty has asked us to continue with the fast on a voluntary basis during this month of Shawwal man sama Ramadan thumma atba'ahu sittam min Shawwal kana ka siyam al-dahr Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar la ilaha illa Allahu wallahu Akbar Allahu Akbar walillahi alhamd we are taught whoever fasts the month of Ramadan and thereafter follows it with six fasts during the month of Shawwal which is this month that we have just entered into they will receive a reward of having fasted the entire year the scholars of hadith explain that the reason is all good deeds for Muslims are multiplied in reward by 10 when you fast for the month of Ramadan it is multiplied a minimum by 10 which means you have a reward of having fasted 10 months in order to complete the year there would be two more months for those two more months we need to fast six more days six by ten equals sixty approximately two months subhanallah so the ten months plus the two months would give you the reward of having fasted the entire year that is an amazing gift of Allah I encourage myself and yourselves through this month of Shawwal not necessarily consecutively but if you were to fast another six more days not only would it be good for your health in terms of having completed the fast of Ramadan and then slowing down into the feast rather than feasting all at once and affecting your health negatively we'd fast for another six days like I said not necessarily consecutive but more than the health benefit is actually the spiritual and religious benefit may Allah make it easy for all of us my brothers and sisters we are also taught to fast on a Monday and a Thursday if possible as a practice of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him on a weekly basis throughout the year the idea is to earn the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept in store for the fast fasting always brings about greatness of the qualities within a human being it's important for us my brothers and sisters to become better people we have a lack of love within the ummah which we seriously need to remedy we need to increase the love for one another today we are here in droves alhamdulillah all to declare the praise of Allah if we do not feel the love for those who are with us here today and for our brothers and sisters across the globe 
and for humankind at large, then indeed we need a lot of help. My brothers and sisters, purify your hearts on this beautiful day. Increase the love from your heart. Reach out to people, those in need, the Muslims in need, the non-Muslims in need, your neighbors, your communities, your nations, etc. Reach out to everyone in a way that the day you leave this earth, you would actually be known for the goodness that you stood by and not otherwise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. My brothers and sisters, earlier I said this is a day of reconciliation. Indeed it is. If you are married and you have marital problems or a dispute, discord, my brothers and sisters, it is an occasion like this that you should be softening your heart. You should be a person who really tries to resolve the matter. It's not important who was right and who was wrong. The promise of not repeating what mistakes we've made can actually help us move forward by the will of Allah. Learn to give people a chance or two. Wouldn't we like to be given a chance by the Almighty? The Almighty in Surah An-Nur speaks about this. Forgive and embrace. Wouldn't you like that the Almighty forgives you? For indeed, He is most merciful, most forgiving, most merciful. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on us and to forgive us. So it is a day to spend time resolving your matters. And yes, definitely both sides need to be told to soften the hearts a little bit. To be serious about the reconciliation. To make an effort to mend your bad ways and habits so that we can live together in harmony. If the marriage is solid, the family unit will be solid. And if the family unit is solid, the community will be solid. Thereafter, we have one solid ummah. And we will be able to benefit mankind at large because of the goodness within us. But if we are to be split over small matters, petty matters, my brothers and sisters, what will become of our children? What will be of community? What will be of society? Can we not think we are billions on the globe, but we don't even have the ability to greet each other at times? My brothers and sisters, let's put an end to that. We must learn to greet with a smile, learn to have a good heart, learn to resolve matters. I spoke about divorce and the fact that if you are struggling with a marital issue, not only do we pray that the Almighty help you resolve it, but we ask you to make an effort to resolve it, my brothers and sisters. Thereafter, any problem you may be having within your family, your brothers, your sisters, your uncles, your aunts, your in-laws and the others, whoever they may be, your community, my brothers and sisters, today is a day of joy. Allah is watching you to see, will you take a moment to try to make an effort to resolve these problems? It's a day of love. It is a day of kindness and compassion. If that compassion and kindness and love is not going to begin at home with your own family members, where do you expect it to begin, my brothers and sisters? So therefore, learn to spread this. Take a moment to resolve your matters, your disputes. Let go of a few things. Allah will let go of you where you have faltered and gone wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Thereafter, my brothers and sisters, make a great effort, a very great effort, reaching out to the non-Muslims with beautiful character and conduct, the true character and conduct taught by Islam, that of goodness and kindness, how many have reduced the hatred that they were made to have due to the wrong narrative that they are constantly bombarded with regarding the Muslims at times due to the deeds of some who call themselves Muslims and perpetrate crimes in the name of Allah, in the name of the messenger, peace be upon him, in the name of you and I, yet those deeds and actions have nothing to do with Islam or the Muslims. That makes our job even more difficult and more important actually to reach out as we are in the masses with the most peaceful message of goodness, love, kindness, compassion and spreading that in a way 
that would actually give the correct image. May Allah make it easy for us. Watch your temper, my brothers and sisters. The good news was the moon was sighted yesterday. The bad news was, according to the narrations, the devil is released at the end of Ramadan. He was tied up at the beginning and he was released. Sometimes the way we behave, it's as though we were the devils being released. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let that happen to us. Let's not dispute on a beautiful day like this. There will be some of our brothers celebrating Eid tomorrow. There is no harm. There is no problem. It is only a matter of jurisprudence. It is not a matter that would split the ummah. Unity, my brothers and sisters, does not lie in uniformity. Don't mix the two. Unity does not lie in uniformity. It, it lies in the ability to respect the opinions that differ from yours and to be able to give them that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us true unity. I don't need to think like you, be like you, and like what you like in order to be united with you. I need to love you as you are, my brothers and sisters. Whether you celebrate it today or tomorrow, whether you have waited for the local moon or whether you have taken the international moon, it is all okay. It is only a matter of jurisprudence. There is no point in creating and spreading hate just because of this one matter of jurisprudence. The same applies, the methodology of fulfilling Salatul Eid. Some people become so passionate about it, but it is only a matter of jurisprudence. There are narrations that could prove one way or the other. And if that is the case, we know it is fine, it is okay. You are still my brother and my sister, and I still love you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and love. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. On a day like this, we are also reminded to think of those who are needy, those who are sick and ill, pray for them. May Allah grant them shifa and cure. May Allah grant them speedy recovery. There are people in the hospitals as we speak. There are people on their beds as we speak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them goodness. And may Allah grant them shifa. Ameen. There are also those who have passed on from our families, from our communities. We remember them on this day and we say, Almighty Allah, have mercy on them. Forgive them and unite us with them in paradise, with the messengers, with Muhammad, peace be upon him. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, on this day, those who are needy should also be reached out to. I am hoping that we have all fulfilled our Sadaqatul Fitr, which is a special type of charity that is given before attending the prayer on the day of Eid al-Fitr, a day like this. The idea is to reach out to the poor and the needy and give them something that they can eat with, they can celebrate with. When you help someone else celebrating, the Almighty blesses your celebration. We ask Allah to bless every one of us and to bless us on this beautiful day and the celebration. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. My brothers and sisters, I would be failing in my duty if I did not remind you to constantly be conscious of the fact that we as Muslims worship Allah and Allah alone. We render no act of worship for anyone or anything besides He who made us. That is known as Tawheed. It is known as the oneness of Allah. We worship Allah alone. We should always be conscious of this. He is alone in His names and qualities. No one shares with Him His names or qualities. And no one can ever have a portion or a share with Him in an act of worship. Be conscious of this because shaitan comes to us and makes us engage in acts of worship knowingly or unknowingly for those besides Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. I would also be failing in my duty if I did not mention the status of Muhammad, peace be upon him, amongst us. He is the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah. It is wrong to hear his name and not say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We owe the fact that we should be following every step of his to ourselves and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You call yourself a Muslim, you believe in two things. La ilaha illallah, then Muhammadur Rasulullah. Those two go hand in hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is none worthy of worship besides he who made me 
and I believe that Muhammad peace be upon him is a messenger of Allah the final prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bear this in mind you're a Muslim people look at you my brothers and sisters they are waiting to see what Islam is all about be conscious of the fact that you are supposed to be the ambassadors you are supposed to be those representing the messenger peace be upon him we represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth may Allah grant us all acceptance Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar la ilaha illa Allahu Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar walillahi alhamd I'd like to end my brothers and sisters this first khutbah by reminding you on a day of happiness do not engage in sinful behavior Allahu Akbar we should be abstaining from sinful behavior on a daily basis anyway more so on a happy day of this nature it does not mean this is the day of Eid I can do what I want I can eat what I want I can dress how I want I can you know do whatever I feel if you're a Muslim you would behave yourself you would make sure whatever you do should be within the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your interactions the way you speak your behavior your dress code everything else should be within the pleasure of Allah what's the point of having a day of happiness when we are making Allah who gave us the day of happiness upset with us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with us Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar la ilaha illa Allahu Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar walillahi alhamd بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن والسنة ونفعني وإياكم بما فيهما من الآيات والحكمة أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه